We've been told a lie, a dogma, which, an ideology, which is Darwinism. For 150 years, we've been told that this is true, but it is not actually. So if you look at the background of this, we'll, see, we'll discover interesting things. So instead of accepting what we are forced to, for, forced to believe, let's look at what Darwinism says. A sensible person, when he hears about Darwinism and when he looks at the scientific evidence, he will clearly see that Darwinism is not supported by science at all. But for the last 150 years, people were people were said things over TV, over radio, newspapers, and everything. They were forced to believe that Darwinism is right and that actually led to communism because communism is based on Darwinism and communism leads to violence. People need the, pe the minds of people should be purged from that because it's as it brings a lots of damage, it brings lots of harm. Those shooting sprees in the schools, for example, why does it? Why does a kid take a gun and shoot other people? Why? Because he believes in natural selection. He believes in the survival of the fittest and goes on a killing spree. So we have to see the danger there. We have to. We have to teach children scientific evidence. We shouldn't teach them dogma. Yes. There is a theory called theory of evolution, but it is unscientific. There is no scientific proof that backs it. When we look at the fossils, when we look at the genetics, when we look at the biology, all these things lead to us one conclusion that God created everything out of nothingness and the genes haven't evolved at all, the species haven't evolved at all, the life hasn't emerged coincidentally. I would like to remind you something because yesterday there was another, there was a re rerun of the evolution program on Haber Türk. Hekel, you know, made some imaginary drawings and he actually admitted himself that they had no scientific bearing. Let's see the picture first. This is what he draw. This is what he drew. Sorry. The top drawings, they they belong to Hekel, and he made the, he drew the he drew the fetus of these dif different creatures, and he made them look like similar to each other. But actually, uh, at the bottom, you can see the original, the real fetus of those creatures. They are very different from each other. So when Hekel drew these things, of course Darwin jumped on this uh, immediately because he took he saw took this as an opportunity. But then Hekel admitted that it wasn't right what he did because he they were imaginary. He says, after I admitted, after I admitted what I did, I should feel embarrassed. I should feel ashamed. But I'm not feeling very embarrassed because there are so many other famous biologists that are t t telling similar lies. So he says that it is not ordinary people that says wrong things. He says it is the biologists or the observers that say different things. Sorry, that say the wrong things that tell lies just like me. That's why I don't feel ashamed. That's what he says, Hekel says. But his drawings are still shown as a proof to the theory of evolution. Actually, universities use these fake drawings by, by Hekel. It is a shame, it is shocking that the universities still use this as a proof to the evolution when Hekel himself confessed that it was a, it was a, it was a lie, he was cheating people, he was lying. And he says, what can I do? Everyone is doing that. But we have to see the danger here. You know, Stephen Jay Gold, 
he said I was aware of I was aware of the fact that this wasn't true this was a lie but we didn't have any evidence to use as a support for Darwinism so I took I said that I said that this was right so I told this to everyone and that was his confession all these confessions show us one more time that theory of evolution has no scientific be bearing uh, these fake drawings by Heikel are still taught at schools in Turkey, in Azerbaijan, in many, many countries at schools. So it is important to see how Darwinism has no scientific support, has no scientific basis. This is actually engineering the subconsciousness of people. During that program in Habertürk, they said something very very interesting they are trying to they are trying to target the subconsciousness of the people for example he said that i wish people read the origin of species by Dar charles darwin so they would understand so many people will think that if i if i read the book of charles darwin then i would see it. so i must be ignorant if i read his book then i will believe in evolution so that's just leading people to, to into believing that into believing that darwinism is right but actually i read the origin of species but by darwin Pro all of us have read it probably it has no scientific uh, proof it has no scientific basis today is maybe a seventh grade student will know more much more than what darwin knew when he really uh, wrote his book because think about the microscopes that the students use at schools today and think about what darwin had when he was writing that book they didn't even see what the cell really looked like he thought that it was just a water filled bubble he wasn't a biologist he wasn't a he was he was just he was just an adventurer. I read a lot of books about Darwin. So I would like to read another confession by Darwin. He said, if the species really evolved from other species, then why can't we see numerous transitional form fossils? And some biologists say that. Why can't, why, you should know that there can't be a half fish half bird yes there can't but darwin says that we have to find them according to darwin that's exactly what we have to find if the evolution really happened he says why is why does everything look very neat maybe the lack of these transitional forms will be the biggest blow to my theory so the poor man he admitted himself and Darwin wrote a letter to his friend in 1960s and he said that thinking about the eye made him have suspicions about his own theory because the eye is such a complex structure we wouldn't be able to explain all of it during our program Darwin also said that looking at, uh, looking at a peacock makes me sick because peacock is a miracle it's an amazing breathtaking art it could never be the result of the coincidences just like everything else in the nature and also let's think about what scientific disciplines were lacking during the time of darwin there was no genetics there was n no electron microscopes there was no paleontology For example, he thought that variation and natural selection were proofs for theory of evolution. evolution. For example, he put birds side by side, going from small to the bigger, and he thought that they evolved from each other. So he was just telling a fairy tale because the, the science level was very, very low. There was no, no one knew about DNA, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, nothing. And he wasn't a biologist too. But they think that he was just an adventurer. He just had fun. He just went to places. He just wanted to see around. They are trying to spread this theory, but using lies, using decei deception methods.